Hello! I have a bit of a different kind of video for you guys today. This is more of a storytelling and educational video. So I'm going to be sharing about my personal struggle with urinary tract pain due to oxalate poisoning. Um, so I will be discussing um, women's health, urinary health. So if you're not interested in hearing that about me, um, maybe this isn't the video for you, but if you're someone that maybe you are struggling with urinary tract health or you know someone that is, I think there's a lot of great information here, so definitely keep watching. So yes, without further ado, let's get to the video. <music> interstitial cystitis, have chronic urinary tract pain with no diagnosis, vulval dynea or vulvar or vaginal pain? Do you have chronic mid, back, hip, pelvic or other joint pain that hasn't responded to chiropractic or other manual therapy? Did these problems begin or become significantly worse during a pregnancy? Do you eat a diet high in plant foods, superfoods or green smoothies and juices? Avoid gluten and dairy products and yet continue to feel your health decline and your pain increase. Oxalate is a simple molecule that is common in many plants and allows plants to protect themselves from pests and infections. Although essentially all plants contain some amount of oxalate, specific types have extremely high amounts such as spinach, beets, sweet potato, rhubarb, kale, Swiss chard, nuts, cacao, black and green tea, turmeric, amaranth, buckwheat, kiwi, and pomegranate. Unfortunately, many of these foods have been labeled as superfoods and have been used in extreme excess in the diets of many well-intentioned, health-conscious people, myself included. When you eat an oxalate-containing food, the oxalate can either bind with calcium and to a lesser extent magnesium in the gut and become unable to pass through the intestinal wall. If the oxalate is in its free form, it'll be readily absorbed into the bloodstream from the intestine. Once in the bloodstream, the body is able to eliminate oxalate in urine through the kidneys. However, the kidneys can only deal with a limited amount. When blood levels pass this limit, the body begins to deposit oxalate crystals in various organs and tissues. This phenomena is well documented in the study of kidney stones, around 80% of which are formed from calcium oxalate. To make matters worse, these sharp, spike, even needle-like crystals tend to accumulate in areas of inflammation and injury, increasing pain and slowing healing. I'll show you some images of oxalate crystals. Why are pregnant women more at risk of oxalate poisoning? Many of the risk factors that place you at a greater risk of oxalate absorption and accumulation, such as high oxalate diet, poor fat digestion, less bioavailable calcium in the gut, nutrient deficiencies, especially B6, intestinal permeability, increased oxidative stress, and antibiotic use tend to be more common during pregnancy. For me, during my pregnancy, I struggled with insufficient production or flow of bile, which is a common issue during pregnancy, and can lead to poor breakdown and absorption of fats. Large globules of undigested fats can wash away the available calcium in the gut, leaving behind insufficient amounts to bind with oxalate. In addition, the body's need for calcium is higher during pregnancy, leading to more being absorbed in the gut, which also means that there is less available to bind with oxalate. There are several ways to mitigate the damaging effects of oxalate on the body. This is not medical advice. I am simply sharing what I have learned 
on my own journey, and you should always consult with a healthcare practitioner before starting a new diet or supplement protocol. So the first way is eating a low oxalate diet. A second option is eating more bioavailable calcium and magnesium with high oxalate foods. The third way is eating only small amounts of high oxalate foods along with large amounts of low oxalate foods. There is also a new favorite in my household which is lactofermentation, which can reduce the oxalate content of foods by up to 75%. This is why things like sauerkraut, pickled vegetables, and sourdough breads can be a lower oxalate option for people trying to reduce their oxalate consumption. In addition, increasing intake of sulfur-rich foods and vitamin B6 rich foods such as onions for sulfur onions and cruciferous vegetables or red meat for B6 can help support your body to eliminate oxalates, which is also why oxalate poisoning can cause deficiencies in these nutrients. If you are struggling with kidney pain, joint pain, or have been diagnosed with calcium, calcium oxalate kidney stones, it is recommended to keep your oxalate consumption below 150 milligrams per day, or even 50 milligrams per day. It is also critical that you reduce your oxalate consumption slowly if you have been eating a high oxalate diet at around a 10% reduction per week. If blood levels of oxalate drop too quickly, your body will dump large amounts of stored oxalate into the bloodstream, which can cause dangerous levels of tissue damage and can lead to a lot of discomfort. This is more likely to occur the longer you've been over consuming and absorbing excess oxalates. Also, if you don't notice dumping symptoms, even when you reduce your oxalate consumption quickly, it can be a sign of endogenous oxalate production. This was the case for me, which is why I was able to do a 10-day raw milk diet without having dangerous dumping. This might not be a good idea for other types of oxalate poisoning. Once my endogenous oxalate production was reduced, I actually began to feel better when adding small amounts of medium oxalate foods to my diet, which prevented dumping symptoms. As a note, if you are pregnant, you do not want to trigger dumping. I would definitely recommend working with a qualified practitioner if you are concerned about oxalate poisoning during pregnancy. And I will share some resources for you in the description. I want you to know that there is hope for your pain. I struggled for two years with severe mid-back and pelvic pain that never went away no matter what I did, no matter how I tried to massage or what position I tried. Terrible. I felt like I constantly had to had a UTI, had to pee at least every hour, and had this distracting discomfort during intimacy with my husband. Only a few months into my low oxalate journey, and my symptoms have been almost completely resolved. I can now carry my heavy toddler all day, not that I want to, when I could only carry him for a few minutes at a time before when he was even, you know, 10, 15 pounds lighter. Overcoming my battle with oxalate poisoning has helped me regain my energy. It's allowed me to do the things I want to do, like going for long hikes with my toddler, being able to sleep, not waking up super early in the morning in pain and not being able to fall back asleep. That's just a few of the things. Sometimes it's hard to remember how much you were struggling once you're past it, but I truly, was at a low point a year ago, and I'm thankful I'm not there anymore. So if this journey, if my journey sounds anything like your journey, I would love to hear about it in the comments below. And if you're interested with seeking support with um, what may be oxalate pain or pursuing a low oxalate diet, feel free to contact me via my website. I'd be happy to schedule a free 20 minute consultation to see if nutritional therapy would be the right support for you. And yeah, that's my story. I hope you liked this kind of video. It was a bit different than some of the other videos I've made. So please, if you've liked it, 
Click the like button so I know. Leave a comment below saying what you liked about it or maybe what you didn't like about it. Next week, I'm gonna have a completely different kind of video. I'm gonna be showing you how I created my work from home space from for a small space. So I'm really excited to share that guys with you. So if you wanna see that video, be sure to subscribe and to ring the notification bell because then you will be notified when that video is up next week. So I'm very excited for that. I can't leave this video without quickly mentioning my new Vitality membership at Alexandra Radway Functional Nutritional Therapy. So if you feel like you are struggling with pain, you're lacking energy, you're struggling with hormonal issues that are really holding you back from living life how you want to, maybe you want to get pregnant and that hasn't happened, maybe you are pregnant and you just feel so terrible that you can't go to work, you can't take care of maybe your other children that you might have. Nutritional therapy can be a great option for you. I have three different levels of support that I provide. At the most basic level, you receive access to my resource library, my newly launched resource library that has therapeutic diets, supplement protocols, detoxification guides, everything that you need to get started and included in that you get a 15% discount on all of the supplements in my professional grade supplement dispensary. That's my glow level, the shine level. So this level you get a little bit more support from me. So I give you an hour every quarter where I go over your in-depth symptom burden graph and give you an in-depth analysis and a custom supplement report and a few customized recommendations for you. And then you get access to all of the, the resource library, the supplements, everything I mentioned at the previous level, as well as all of my online courses, which will be coming to you guys very soon. I'm really excited to start sharing about what I have, what I'm working on there. And finally, if you're really, if you're ready, if, you, if you're needing help, you want an in-depth level of one-on-one -on -one support with me, I have the Radiance level of membership, and that is my full service package. So I provide you with in-depth consultation time up to two hours every month. I give you unlimited email support, all of the other resources and options that the other membership levels get, but you get that in-depth one-on-one level of support with me. So just had to share about my new offerings there. I'm really excited to have these available for you guys because I want to make nutritional therapy as accessible as possible and be able to provide the level of support that you're ready for because I know from even my own journey that it might take time before you're ready to really see a practitioner. You might want to try to work things out on your own first, which I think is great as long as you're getting some of the right resources and you know who to reach out to if you hit a stumbling block or you get to the point where you're like, okay, I, I really do need some more help. So. That's the Vitality membership. Thanks for sticking around to hear about that. Um, if you want to find out more, there's a link in the description below. It'll take you to my website. You can get the full information of all the, the pricing, the different benefits of the each membership level, and you can sign up right there on my website. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Alexandra Radway, and I make weekly videos about intuitive cooking, holistic nutrition, and just various interests of mine. So I really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you for listening today. I hope that this story resonated for some of you out there, and I would love to be a supportive resource to anyone that was struggling at all in the way that I was struggling. So thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. The video's over. Now what do I do?